My name is Richard Easter. Are you a scientist, Richard? I am indeed a scientist. Uh -huh. What kind of scientist are you? Um, I'm a cosmologist. I think about how the universe began and how it got to be the way that it looks like today. Well, how about virtual particles? What role do they play in this idea of false vacuum? Uh, so virtual particles are a slightly different thing, and the, the quantum the quantum universe allows us to make, um, you know, quantum the quantum um, theory says that things can be somewhat indeterminate, I guess. And so we think of the energy conservation as being an absolute rule, but it's the indeterminacy of quantum mechanics allows you to borrow particles from the vacuum, and then as long as you put them back quickly enough. And so these vir virtual particles are particles that we've borrowed from the true vacuum um, by virtue of the sort of uncertainty principle in quantum mechanics. And they, they are definitely in this room. But if, if you have a different vacuum, you have a false vacuum, wouldn't you have more virtual particles coming into and out of existence? In some sense, there's more energy in the vacuum? The energy sits in the vacuum, but it's not necessarily going to let you make particles out of it. It's the energy. It's not. I mean, that's my understanding of it. I mean, there's, there's more than one possible, you know, false vacuum covers a lot of different ideas, but the, the vacuum, the energy that sits in the vacuum, in some sense, at least in terms of you know, interactions inside of this room, that energy is latent. It's not necessarily, you, know, it's, you don't need false vacuum in order to make virtual particles. Some people talk about pre-Big Bang stuff. Was, did time exist before the, the Big Bang in any sense that makes sense? And many, I think, <laughs> cosmologists would kind of disagree on this, I guess. I think if you wanted to, yeah, if you, if you wanted to get a bunch of cosmologists arguing about stuff, you would ask them that question. And so, I, I mean, my own personal philosophy as a scientist is to be quite conservative about this, is that I try to ask questions about things that I think I can calculate. And so... I, there are different, there are, you know, from a point of view of a given observer, you know, we have a big bang in our past, but that may not have created the whole universe. That big bang may have happened inside of some larger universe. And in that case, you know, it's perfectly reasonable to think of time existing outside of our universe. In other scenarios, you know, time doesn't sensibly exist until, until the big bang happens. I mean, it's a, so, so that one could go either way. There are scenarios where both of those, where both possible answers to that question are, are true. Are we alone? Um, as far as we can tell, there's nothing special about our star um, or our, the galaxy that we live in. So, uh, you know, it may be that we're, um, that we're in some sense, you know, there may be some special kind of, you know, alignment of circumstances that has to happen to produce a planet like ours, um, to produce life. We, you know, we don't know that how that happens, but given that what happened produced us, it seems likely to me that we have, you know, that the same process has occurred elsewhere. I think the bigger question is how long we're going to last. <laughs> and so, you know, if each, you know, if you produce intelligent life and then it makes life uninhabitable or makes its home uninhabitable, you know, too quickly for it to figure out what it's doing to itself, then I think it may be that each, you know, each flowering of life may be relatively short. And then in that sense, we may, you know, the universe may be less populated than it might, 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 might otherwise be the case. I think there's some risk of that. The students of this course are not necessarily scientists. Right. And so they're trying to get a grip on the origin of the universe. It sounds so right. compelling. It sounds like, oh, I got to revert to religion or something. Uh. Now, what can you help under a, a student of humanities or history understand the origin of the universe in less than a minute? I think the key thing to think about is we don't, I'm going to tell, I'll think about it for a minute and then I'll talk about it. Um, I think the key, the key part of it or the key understanding that comes out of the Big Bang is that there seems to be a finite point in the past where the universe as we currently understand it didn't exist. And then, you know, so a finite time from the present back into the past. And we don't know exactly what that moment was, but we're certainly able to think about what happened inside of the universe, um, you know, tiny fraction of a second after that time, and do calculations and test predictions that come out of those calculations. So we know, we know the history of the universe, but we don't necessarily understand its birth. Are you the result of a quantum fluctuation? As, as, as are we all, it would seem to be. <laughs> Not okay. Personally. <laughs> okay. Now, how about the interface between cosmology and religion? I'm going to be interviewing a couple of like rabbis and priests about, you know, are we alone? And uh, mm -hmm. you know, but what? It, to give me your personal take on that. Okay, my personal take on that is I'm an atheist. Um, I, I was sent to a, you know, a, a private school that had a chaplain um, by my parents, and he used to cane people, so I wasn't. You know, that, was my, <laughs> that was my primary contact with the religion, but. Um, I think more more seriously, I, I think the thing that surprises me most is how little cosmology and religion actually have to do with each other. So I've worked on projects where, you know, there were other people who, you know, from a variety of faith traditions are Buddhists, or, um, you know, people from a Christian background, people from Muslim background, uh, people from Jewish background, sometimes all on the same project. And as far as I could tell, 
We all approach cosmology in essentially the same way as each other, whether or not we're actively religious or just in terms of the sort of intellectual tradition that we've grown up in, inside of. And so if, you know, if, you, if, you, if the way that you're doing cosmology doesn't depend on, at the very least, your kind of cultural exposure to the religion, mm. the surprising thing is, is that in some ways, you know, that if, if there really was a connection between cosmology and religion, you might expect that people with different religious backgrounds would see cosmology you know, differently. Mm -hmm. And as far as I can tell, we don't. And so I think the really surprising thing is, is you know, is that very little, you know, unless you're very concerned about, you know, um, you know, very literal reading of Genesis, for instance, the, the overlap between cosmology and religion, I think, is actually smaller than most um, you know, people would think if they just looked at what they saw in the news.